Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. In a way, we go. There he is. The Rhino himself. Ten plus years in the National Football League trenches. Former Minnesota Viking Alex Boone. Good morning, sir. It's a great morning to you. It is early, isn't it? I think we've kind of gotten into a groove, though. I kind of like the early morning. This is what you guys would do, right? You get get mm-hmm. your asses up and go break down film with each other with your – put a little dip in and Dude, you slink me, down right? in your seat, right? It's 6 o'clock in the morning. Got a dip in. Got a coffee. What could be better? Let's break Boy, some oh. film down. But honestly, we don't have to break down this film, do we? We're going to break down different film because I don't know that I could watch that film. No, and, I'm going to uh, force you to watch 12 to 7, a 12 to 7 victory. <sighs> Dude, this was – the Vikings put up 400 plus yards. The Vikings, it was one of the, if you just look at the box score without looking at the score, one of the most lopsided games. But when you turn Ever. the ball over in epic fashion in the red zone two or three times like they did, uh, but the backup kicker, like the emergency backup <laughs> kicker had to, R- you, dude, you know it's a barn burner of a game when in the locker room, the, lo- the long snapper and the holder get game balls. Yeah. <laughs> It's a bad, it was a bad day. I'm not going to lie. It was a bad day. And that's one of those ones in the locker room where everyone's kind of looking around like, a win's a win. A win is a win. Like, you're trying to convince yourself that this is good for us, right? Like, we needed a win like this in the season to test us. Don't anyone forget that. And we passed that test. But the problem is you failed to forget it was versus the Jaguars, who I think are in contention for the first pick in the draft. That's Very much. I, solidly in contention. Yeah. You're solidly <laughs> in contention for having me worried now at this point. And I'm not going to I'm going to say that, number one, I still, J.J. is clutch. I mean, he, he can catch some balls. T.J. Hawkinson, hello. Welcome back. That yeah. was huge. Massive presence. But at the same time, the interceptions, the bad throws, the... It's not It's not going to go very well. And that's one of the things that you and I have talked about it on several shows, but... November and December are when you need to play your best football. It can't be we were struggling to grind one out against the Jaguars because this wasn't working or we're throwing interceptions or we're taking sacks or, you know, even – and this is such a hard thing to kind of poke at, but, like, even the late hit out of bounds by Cam was so stupid. It's just like, what are we doing? See, I, yeah, it's funny. I was wondering what your thoughts were on that play. I thought you were going to – I thought you might take the other side on that. The hey, no. he's playing his old team. He's he's getting the he's, he's showing his loyalty to his new no, team. No, because you you can f- you can do whatever you want during the whistle between the white lines. You could do whatever you want. We'd all be like, sure, man, that's cool. But like mm-hmm. that looked because, because as you're watching it, like in the moment, would I have cared? Probably not. But when I watched the replay, I'd be like, dude, that looked really intentional. Like that means that is really stupid. Right, we know we're going to get flagged for hitting a guy out of bounds, especially because you're the size of a skyscraper and he's the size <laughs> of a dog. Like I don't know what you guys don't see. This is a clearly a lopsided mismatch. They're going to call that every time. But it was crazy because the 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 one thing that I kept thinking about was the time of possession. Dude, the Vikings had the ball almost the entire game, and it was still one of these games where it was like you drive, 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 interception. You bet. Drive, 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 interception. Oh, my God. What is going on? Sack fumble. You're like, dude. Or the other interception that you think fourth one got called back, thank God. But at the same time, it's like, dude, this is not what we're doing. And it started really good this year. The last couple of weeks have me concerned because it's like, where is this going? What Did he just throw that? What? Sack fumble. You're like, oh man, this is not what we've been doing all year. Where has the vibe gone? Where It feels like the juice has almost kind of left a little bit and the whole start of the season, everybody was really excited. And now you're getting into the nitty grit of it. And that's like, that's the other side of the NFL where it's like some teams just can't keep up because there's so many games and they're just going at it so long. And all of a sudden it's like, there's no more coal to put in the train, man. That's it. We're, we're out. We're, yeah. we're, we're running low, right? Like we lost our left tackle, and we've traded for a dude, and we think this is going to be great, but it's like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not mad at the defense. Did phenomenal. I mean, Mac Jones. Yeah. Dude, How is that guy still in the league? I'm going to be like, honest with you. We're, it is, no, it I'm is, just going to be dude, straight. A couple things. Uh, I'll put Probably a pin in the Mac. I have a, I have a Mac Jones thing for you, but – 
you're right about there's a lot of teams every year there's like a small handful of teams that come out gang I mean the Dolphins do this almost every year this year it might be the opposite they were my number one yeah gangbusters in like September October you're like wow and then and then things settle in then it gets cold and everyone's like ah there they are (laughs) and so are the Vikings a team that hey nice little start in September October but then the league because because one thing and and you'll see some of this woven into the tape and we'll break it down in a second like the league has made an adjustment to Sam Darnold. I'll give you you love statistics. I know you love statistics. <laughs> the Jaguars, the Vikings ran like 80 some offensive plays in that game. 42 minutes time of possession. The Jaguars blitzed once in 3 hours. Mm. So early in the season, you know, teams are running blitzes, more blitzes at Sam Sam Darnold's actually been really good against the blitz this season cuz KOC gives him the answers. Right. So the Jaguars went into the film room and said, hmm, you know, uh, maybe we should just drop seven and eight back into coverage all day long and make a shaky accuracy quarterback have to throw into tighter windows and make decisions. And it worked. They literally blitzed once in three hours in that game. And so if you're Kevin O'Connell, what's the if if the Titans and the Bears on your schedule are saying, "Okay, yeah, let's just let's Ah. drop them all back into coverage. What's the counter to that is my question. Number one, you'd run the ball a lot more. Number two is we would have quicker routes going. We'd have more answers faster because one of the things that made the Jags, I feel like, do that was they were allowed to put pressure on with four. And there's only a certain amount of teams that can do that. Like, you have to be a defense. Like, you know who's a great example of this is Philly, right? Like, last year, Philly's going crazy with the blitz. Well, now Vic Fangio shows up, and what's Vic like to do? He rushes four. He's going to make these four great guys, four great rushers. When you have great rushers up front, you can do that. You can just go, hey, the four of you are going to go crazy, and the rest of us are going to drop back. And at times, I don't really always go with that, even against a guy like Patrick Mahomes, because I always feel like if you throw pressure at somebody, they're eventually you're going to get to them, right? Like eventually something's going to crack in the dam. They're not going to pick up every single blitz, right? Like that is not physically humanly possible because the chances of someone dropping out and someone being wrong are just too astronomical. So you're almost looking at it like, man, I'm not sure why these teams don't throw more pressure at, but when you can get home with four or three at times, like you've seen it, Mackie, we're watching the game, three guys rushing, you get a second, <laughs> Yeah. The hell was that? Like that just came out of nowhere. That's when you can start winning as a team. But and th- you know, do I think that these other teams are going to be able to do that? No. Do I think some of them are going to try it? Sure. But I think others are just in their nature. They're like, we're a blitzing team. We we throw the blitz at you, like um, like Flores when he was in Miami. Like the blitz rate was like sixty percent. It was like good yeah. luck like but that's what i'm saying like there's two ways to die it's either i'm sending less and i'm going to drop back and we're just going to make this a which where's he going game or it's we're going to pin our ears back and we're coming for you game I, i'm not going to say that everyone's going to be like oh this is the formula going forward because you look at some of these d lines you're like you're not getting home with that d line no 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 you're right. not no, not even with cam robinson out there you're not getting home with that it's it's not going to happen so they're these are the teams that they probably saw something and they were like, hey, maybe we can exploit this weakness. Number one, this dude's always going to try and go to JJ. Like At the same time, even when he's covered, double covered, he's still going to throw it to JJ. So why don't, we just, uh, why don't we just watch where that guy is the whole game? And then after that, we'll let everyone <laughs> yeah. else beat us. Oh, and by the way, now that Hawkinson's back, we're going to definitely have to watch him too. Yeah, on the, on the Mac Jones front, uh, so this is crazy. Going into that game, Mac Jones had a better career passer rating than Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> no way. Which is, I, I can't I don't tell know if, if I that's believe that. an indictment on Lawrence, but uh, yeah. I can't, I, of, I'm not even kidding you. I can't physically believe that. It's, be, it's because the stats are so swayed one way. It's probably because Trevor Lawrence has like a thousand <laughs> passes and Mac Jones has 10. Dude, I, yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> that, that's bad. It was bad. And it. I, I'm I not, think his I'm passer gonna, rating took, probably took a dip. Uh, below oh. Trevor Lawrence after that game but uh, so we're just, what we're going to do sorry. is we're I'm going to show you like I don't know a couple handfuls of plays here do it some some offensive stuff some some Brian Flores defense flustering Mac Jones <laughs> and we will dive into the film by the way if you uh, if you enjoy these Alex Boone film breakdowns you've got your own YouTube channel Jeremiah Searles I'm part of it uh, the O-line committee YouTube channel in fact uh, the <laughs> The Why Should the Bears Fire Everyone podcast, and here's why the Bears fired their offensive coordinator film breakdown went kind of gangbusters on the YouTube channel this week. So you guys you guys had a viral social media clip explaining one of the disaster plays, so people can check that out, O-Line Committee YouTube channel. Hey, 
We did not call that play. That's all we have to say for ourselves. <laughs> Jeez. Dude, Dude at one point did. in Someone's the comments, con- Kellen Mond was like fighting with Jeremiah Searles in the uh, comments. First section. of all, I can't believe you would bring him up. How about the fact that Matt Slauson came to our defense, That's former nuts. guard from the Chicago Bears who yeah. used to just eat people. My God, what? A, by the way, you know someone's going to come out eventually and tell us what happened. Like eventually, this I feel like yeah. this has gained some traction. That either Caleb's going to come out and be like, "I messed this up and called it the wrong way," or Shane Waldron's going to come out and be like, "I didn't call that play." It's going to be like you know, he screwed it up in the huddle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Can't wait. Let's so roll. Tape. Before before we dive into the tape here, let's look at the tape oh. of uh, AG One. So. Mm. AG1 is trusted by top athletes all over the world. A simple and comprehensive foundational nutrition supplement for whole body health. It helps me fill nutritional gaps and fortify my body so uh, so I can focus on things that matter, like breaking down film and hot mm. takes about football. With essential vitamins, minerals, and nutrients to support daily performance and sustained energy, AG1 is a powerfully simple step you can take today for a better tomorrow. So ensure you're giving your body the nutrients it needs to thrive with AG1. I've been uh, using AG1 as part of my repertoire off and on for eight years. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five of these free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash purple daily. That's drinkag1.com slash purple daily also a shout out to our friends at nicolay law the exclusive personal injury law firm of purple daily nicolay law knows that when you or a loved one gets injured things can get chaotic things can get complicated that's where russell nicolay and his team locally based they're just your normal everyday folks that happen to have law degrees that can help you get the compensation you deserve after an accident so if you've been injured get minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers Nicolay, NicolayLaw.com, or give them a call at 1 855 Nicolay. Football. Here we okay. go. Okay. 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 Let me, uh, let me get that banner off here for you, Booney, so we can you see know, the, I hate the banner. I know. So let's, uh, let's see what we got here. Ooh. I can't, I, I can't remember the order in which you're going to see the good and the bad. So we're going to learn together as we watch these. You know what? Uh, let's just do it together. Look at this four by one set. My God. Oh, God. Look at, look at the mobility here, man. I'll tell you what. Let me tell you something real quick before uh, I shut up and turn over to you. Tell me. My amateur eyes, I watched, my my first thought was, oh, my God, Sam Darnold, what are you doing for three hours? But in and around the interceptions, like this play, he can, like, he can play, man. Like, if he can just cut out the catastrophe interceptions, look at this play, dude. I agree. That's I that's like athletic, it. man. I like it because he runs to his left and he makes a really good throw. But, and go back real quick. This is one of the things that we talked about earlier, and this is like we're bringing pressure with four right now. Obviously, Cam, they're going to be coming for him. Pause real quick, because anyone that knows that if you're going to leave a team, like if you get traded and you play that team, and let's think about the situation, right? The Jags are in first place to get the first pick. The Vikings are on the opposite end of the spectrum. I'm sure a lot of these guys are really, really pissed at him, right? You know yeah, they're coming jealousy. for you. No, more than jealousy. It's almost like rage. Like, how did you get off the sinking ship and you're going to the playoffs? No. So you know they're going to be coming for him, number one. But go ahead, roll script. Like you said, this is a great job of Darnold getting out of trouble to his left. Cam just kind of takes this bull rush on, go back a little bit. He takes it on not really ready for it because normally what do we say, Mackie, you know this, the most important thing of an offensive lineman is that he strikes. By the way, look look how the defensive end looked up at Aaron Jones like, you go chip me, huh? Okay, it's it's like that, huh? (laughs) Look at who he comes in. Oh, my God. Hey, I know that's not Trayvon Walker. Is that Allen? Is that Josh Allen? Uh, I'm, I, I'd have to see the numbers here. I, th- I think it's 41. I think I'm it's Josh so Allen. bad with look, numbers. Look, 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 look at him right there. Up, like, yeah. yeah, he's like, I, you're not <laughs> doing that to me. I don't think so. I love that. I love when you see stuff like that. But all right, here we go. Boom, pause. Oh, he gets right in there. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, you, he let him right into his chest, right? And Biden at the same time, and this is something that comes up a lot, and people don't really pay attention to it, look at his base. If you go back and pause it, his feet are on the same exact line linearly. Go ahead, keep rolling, keep rolling. Pause. See how his feet are on the same line? 
They're like, mm. there's no width between them. There's no base. Like, look at Bradbury. He's got big base. Ed Ingram, big base. Like, you've kind of accepted this diagonally, and you have no base. And at the same time, we talk about it all the time on the O-line committee. You must strike. When you come play your former team, you must strike to kill. You need to kill them to put them down because they're mad at you. They're coming for you. And I don't know if this was after the hit out of bounds. That's another thing. That's going to set them off, right? Like, this is not good by the left tackle. But at the same time, it's a great job by Sam to get out of trouble. I see trouble to my right. I'm going to go out to my left. It's, it's never great job. good when three of your offensive linemen are just on the ground. Like These two on the ground I'm not upset about because if you look, the defensive tackle's on the ground with them. So it's kind of like, okay, well, whatever those two did, it took him way out of the picture. So I'm not mad about that. We're clearly sliding to the left. Yep, 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 right there. We're good, we're good. Nice punch, nice punch. See, I'm not mad about that one. Got it. Well, I'm mad swallowed, about this one right this, here. They swallowed the – so they ran a game here, right? They ran a little stunt. And... and hey, what did we just say? What's the one thing we say on the old line committee all the time? If there's a stunt coming, you must punch the penetrator. You must punch the penetrator, yes. Correct. And this guy to the right is our penetrator because he's the one that's supposed to hit Bradbury in the hip. This tackle on the right, he's going to hit Bradbury in the hip because they're sliding to the left. This game is brought on by which way you slide you always slide you always run the pick into the center so that the guard coming back has to go both ways right like that's the one thing they're going to try and make us do but ed ingram does a great job of pinning him in there which is phenomenal but once again sam darnold getting away from trouble a little dink and dunk i'm going to go to my guy boom boom and by the way another reason why i mean you talk about getting away from trouble and the separation that Justin Jefferson creates with these one-on-one matchups. I mean, it's incredible. And even at times when you throw the 50, 50 ball to him, he makes it look so easy. And that's why people have been blitzing Darnold and they're like, ah, oh, you know, and now all of a sudden you see a team that's like, Hey, maybe we don't, maybe we sit back and see what this kid can do in a zone, give him some different looks, throw some man at him at times. Like it, it's it, interesting. Josh Oliver, go. by the way, has like, I want to say 11 catches in the last three games, two Dude, touchdowns. Dude, he showed up. Yeah. And then you throw in Hawkins into it, and now all of a sudden you're like, he likes the tight ends. I get this. He must Vikings like are running a lot of two tight end sets. 12, baby. The last couple weeks. But 12 is great because it puts you kind of in a bind as a defense because 12 is in between 11 and 13. Like 11 is distinctly a pass, right? 13 is clearly a run. 12 is your formation that puts you in the middle. And that's where defenses sometimes have trouble trying to locate what you are. Like this could be nickel. This could be base. And a lot of what our kills were, were and let's see. What's the big picture look like? Who's to the, yeah. who's to the left of us? This, is, this looks like it's nickel. So like 12 right here, you could be playing nickel and then all of a sudden we see that they're a nickel and it's like, hey, let's run the ball, right? Like they got a lot of small guys on the field. And then all of a sudden they put base out there and you're like, hey, let's throw the ball. It's always the reverse of what they want to do. And that's what the check kill system helps us with. But once again, I love the fact that TJ came back because it seems like this is going to be really fun. These big tight ends across the middle, they're going to force you to keep guys in the middle and then all of a sudden the outsides become open. There was some really nice things here. It's just blanketed with some some INTs after some long drives. That's like, yeah. And those sometimes can be the worst because you, I'm not against a long drive. I think you need long drives every game to kind of let the other team know, like, we can just mess with you the whole day. And at the same time, it'll wear down the defense. But when you have a long drive that turns into a turnover, you're like, eh, okay. And, and then you have another one. And then you're like, what are we working for? That's what are we what's brutal. The oh, Vikings. Yeah, hard. I think I saw the stat. The Vikings came into the game with the fewest double-digit play drives, like 10 play drives on the season. And mm -hmm. in this game, I think they had four 10-plus play drives in this game alone. And two Which or three is time of, of possession, with right? Anderson. Yeah. And, and to that point, so 42 minutes time of possession, it was the longest the Vikings offense has had the ball in a game since the turn of the century, since, <laughs> since 2000, dude. So if I'm telling you, okay, hey, you're gonna you're gonna have the ball for 42 minutes and 19 seconds. You're gonna get over 400 yards of offense, and uh, and, the, and the other team is gonna turn the ball over three times. What do you think the final score is gonna be? Not oh, 12 you, to seven. <laughs> you'd you'd be like, oh, easily 31 to nothing. Yeah. So here's nah. the first pick. No, nah, thank God Romo is there. <laughs> John Parker Romo, Let's dude. Play. What a so this is the first pick. It. He's trying to force one to Jefferson here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Staring mm -hmm. him down, too. Just, uh, he, uh, go back. 
I mean, I'll go wide here. That we can. I know it's kind of hard to see this interception. Same time, there's a little bit of pressure, right? We're getting we're getting a little bit of pressure <laughs> again. The, this is one where I kind of look at it and I'm like, dude, and like this is what drives me nuts. And you, everybody can say whatever they want. I kind of hate that the quarterbacks throw the ball too because they're like, well, at least I'll probably get the pi on this. And you're like, dude, that's not a good way to. That's not the Jefferson's clearly blanketed the entire time. Like. They had no point in this has he been open. And at times it's like I feel like quarterbacks are like, well, at least I'll get the P.I., right? And you're like, I don't know if that's really what we're thinking anymore. That's not the smart yeah. play. And in fairness, there's really no, no obvious you, outlet here. No, I guess not. if he if he could get his way over to this, but that's like three. Well, this three is a three step. Line. This is a three yeah. step drop, right? Like obviously everyone's running a five yard route. We're three step. And in three step, we're always taught up front, you need to attack people. Because I, number one, if you attack them on the three step, they can't get their hands up. And these are one of these balls that you see Cam Hayward block down all the time, right? Because he knows the the quarterback's just gonna catch the ball and throw it. And he's like, Hey, if I'm in this lane, I'm gonna put my hand up. So the coaching point up front is always attack. Attack them. Number one, the ball's out quick. Number two, we don't want hands up. But we get a little bit of pressure here from the right side and yeah. it kind of looks like he might be touching sam when he throws that ball you try you looking right here yeah kind of looks like he's touching his face mask doesn't it like he's reaching out reach out and touch faith well we know that if he did touch his face mask they weren't going to call it they're not calling anything Darwin. anymore guys i hate to tell you <laughs> I, i'm liking this new league yeah that that's a that was not i mean turn the ball over you're like okay we'll come back we could do we could do this so we, or if we fast forward in time here. Vikings get it back. They've they've matriculated their way inside the 10 once again. Jaguars dropping a bunch into coverage. And there's the second pick. Mm. Got to force it to Jefferson again. Mm. It's tough, man. You get inside the 10, and well, there's just not as much room to operate. You know, one thing people don't know is when you get inside the red zone, everything naturally gets smaller, right? And that's why teams are judged on their red zone offense. You're not judged on your 40 to 40 offense. Nobody cares what you can do when you have a whole football field to play with. Everyone judges you based on your red zone offense because that's when all the windows get super small. And it's like, how accurate is your quarterback? How decisive is your quarterback? How good is your offensive line? All these things become super important. And this game was... I'm not going to say it was concerning, but it was interesting because it was like, I agree with you. A little bit of a formula was created here, but at the same time, not a lot of people can run with that formula. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm not concerned, but at the same time, like, dude, what are we holding on to the ball for? Do this something. This is a, okay, ah. you tell me, but this is a great, I think, you tell me if I'm an idiot. This is a great job by the offensive line. This is, they're, they're running like two stunts at once here. Oh, yeah. I feel like, this is it looks like a pressure because when he throws it there's some traffic here but i don't know man like let's run this full speed first and then you tell me how about the Eric offensive Armstead? line do its job here are you going to get any wider yeah <laughs> we're coming in look at him Jesus. Number 91 he gets crunched but that's that's a lot of time right there man Armstead all the way out here. Yeah, look at him. Oh, dude. Wait, what are we playing? <laughs> Defensive end. Now, by the way, he has every bit of six foot eight. Every bit. I played with him. <laughs> he looks like he's he's like a slot cornerback in position here. Is he covering Addison on this play? Uh, he's trying That's to like he's trying to hit him off the line. He's trying to disrupt his watch this. Yeah. <laughs> cool. dude, Addison runs right by. I'm like, nah, don't touch me. <laughs> I love Comes it. Um uh, Yeah. I I don't I don't like the accuracy of that ball. Yeah. Straight up. I think the pocket's closing on you, move around a little bit, do something. I don't know. It's just they went down there, and they look like a different team. Defensively. <laughs> Meanwhile, okay, yeah, let's flip the say. defensive side here. Are we sure Flores is going to be here next year? Are we sure? <laughs> he deserves know. another shot. Oh, yeah, okay. he's going to get that coach. shot. He's going to get that shot real quick. Oh, look at Cashman coming in hot here. This is when uh, go back real quick. This is this is bad. This is bad because this is a miscommunication up front. Bigsby goes to the right when he should be going to the left, and I don't know. Can you take it back far enough in the wide that we can see the point? I want to make. You want to see where the, like who they see identify? this make? Yeah, 
Is this as far back as it nah, goes? it's not going to show you. All right, go ahead. So basically, it's an eight up look, right? And then all of a sudden, we see Harry start to fall back. Go ahead, keep playing. And as soon as we do that, I think what happened was, and this would be the best bet, when as soon as they saw Harry up, they were like, we're going to him. We're just going to go to him, right? And when he backs off, they still continue to that side. See okay, how we, so you're saying right so Harry, Harry was up to start. Yeah, exactly. And then and he kind of bails back. We did that too. In 16 or 15 when we played him, it was anytime Harry's on the ball, we're going to go to that side because there's a good chance he's going to come, right? Okay. Here's what's interesting is the minute that he goes off the ball, we could we should we should technically go the other way, right? Cuz there's four, but we could put the running back to the right. So that puts them 3 for 3, which we're good. But so real minute, quick here, so with with Harry down here as he was to start with, you're counting four guys to mm -hmm. the right of the center. Yep. In which case center slides right. Mm -hmm. But with him but with Harry bailing, offensive line should actually adjust this to the four dudes over here and center slide left exactly because then you would go what would happen is on the right you would have 77s on the end 68s on the d tackle you'd put the running back in the middle on van ginkle no no yeah out out oh have i got them, you got you got you'd, out, you'd out, have out. them okay. out because and then on the left what you would do is you would have the center take cashman you'd have the left guard take the three technique you'd have the tackle take the end and say 24 cam bynum did come his rush lane would be so wide because we've slid out that way. You know what I'm right. saying? Like it would force him to get way wider than it is right now. And you could throw hot if needed, maybe. Correct. If he's good, that right. would be my route. My would be my sight adjust. Hey, if 24 comes, 85, you're in the flat now. And but the problem is, Bigsby goes the wrong way, and and they keep is, the slide to the right. Exactly. So that and, leaves him. <laughs> and the problem is he's in pistol. And anytime we were in pistol, we were taught that this is technically considered an under protection. We, unders, the people don't go under center anymore. But back when I was playing, we always went under center. So when pistol was introduced, it was considered an under center formation. So basically the, the running back could never go backside to front side. He has to go right now to the problem. And a lot right. of this is it's kind of mis -ID'd. And once again, we're playing checkers while you're playing chess, and we're winning. We're destroying you. By the way, you know, Mark, Mark job Sanchez by Blake to go through the, the running back. Yeah, and Mark Sanchez was the the color commentator. Who, by the way, I enjoy Mark Sanchez on the broadcast. He he's well prepped, and he ex <laughs> he explained this. He he looked at this right away after the play the same way you did and said, Bigsby needs to abandon the. Uh, he needs to abandon the direction of the play action and just do his job. Right. <laughs> which is which is pick up the free runner here. Exactly. He, it's almost like he prioritized carrying out the play action to the right. Because sometimes you've explained this before, and Jay has, that sometimes you'll see like a team will run a play action and the running back will go the opposite direction. Like, well, that didn't look effective. Well, the running back is bailing on the play action to pick up a free runner. Yeah, there's a lot of times you see that. And people will say to me like, what what's he doing and you're like yeah. there's somebody coming <laughs> off the edge stupid they have four strong right. four week <laughs> dude uh i love this that total let's, miscommunication just set that up so let's see here we got we got a little more chaos for mac jones lined up mm. here oh i love Five how they days. show blitz from the left and then they bring it from the right <laughs> this is so it's sometimes pop warner like somebody on the left is trying to draw all of our attention and then it just ends up being zero running right through the running back's face I love it. See, even Mac Jones like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're definitely going out there, which is pause, which is a great matchup. Why? Because we want our linebacker on their running back. If all of a sudden we were to see this zero coming, we would stop and be like, no, nope, now we're going to him. And that's a mismatch for them, right? You, that puts technically that would have put me on Ivan Pace. So all of a sudden now that's not what you want. But see how when they slide this way, ETN has to step up in here. Oh, so good. This is a great. I mean, he's he's also a kind of well. So what's what's the right tackle doing? Here's the problem, and I you didn't you didn't put the play in. I don't. Maybe you did put it in for later. But there, this same play happened twice. They got two sacks on the same play, and and what happened was in the first one. This may have been the first one where the tackle comes down. Right, like he's he's. It's a six man pro. Okay, go back. Six man. The running back is in. So instantly when this tackle sets, he sees um, Grenard hit the receiver. 
And he goes, I'm going to help the running back for just a second because technically I have nothing to do right now. And I would never just stand there and watch everybody fight. Like you have to kind of help somebody while you can. So see how he sets and he's like, oh, Grenard's out. I'm going to punch this guy, right? So he ends up helping the running back, but he gets out, but it kind of screws ETN, but it doesn't. Like ETN just does a shitty job of blocking. The nothing about this really mess. I'm sure you put the other sack on here too. It looks like ETN. It looks like ETN starts looking for other work too here, right? It looks like ETN sees, oh, the tackle's gonna clamp down on, on pace. So I, it, it, for a second, it looks like he's gonna look for other work on the inside here, right? No, at first he's checking Cashman to make sure he's not coming, and then yes, right there, it looks like it kind of screws ETN. But okay. it looks like ETN knows he has to block him, so. This is just a bad job of coaching this offense because in our offense with the Niners, we were always kind of taught like never touch something unless it's yours, right? But at the same time, we would tell our running backs like, hey, listen, if this defensive end's going to do something silly or if this guy's not going to be here, I'll, I'll hold presence for you. And they'd be like, all right, sweet. So like we had a very good understanding. This is still your guy. I'm just going to stay really tight to you so he doesn't make a crazy move on you. That same play, either that was the first one or the second one, but the second one is the same exact blitz, and the tackle, I think, goes out, and then ETN goes out too because he's like, well, the tackle's taking it. It, like, it ends up messing with them, Be, and that's one of the fun things about throwing blitzes that people, I keep saying this, like pressure will eventually always get home. You just have to keep laying it on in different ways, and then all of a sudden the running back's messed up, and then the right tackle's messed up, and then they're looking at each other like, well, are you going to block him or am I going to block him? Like, <laughs> and, it, and the tackle's like, no, dude, it's your responsibility. I'm just making sure he's not here to run through you. Like, I'm going right. to be a backup for you. And it can be really confusing at times. All right, Vikings back on offense inside the red zone here. And this is the third interception. <sighs> Just man, all of these you've made your way all the way down the field. I know. I think this is also where Cam Robinson here's your this boy is it. Yeah, coming yeah. in hot, right? Boom. Oh, he's a good, good two, three steps out of bounds on this play. That's a good twenty three hundred dollar fine right there, buddy. Mm. Mm. So I mean, yeah, his offensive line. Allowing a pressure here? Is this just a bad throw by Darnold? You tell us. Well, number one, I think it's a bad throw. I mean, safety's over the top. He clearly had – there's no pressure. That's a that's a good pocket. That's as good as it's going to get, buddy. Oh, <sighs> Palms up in the air, by the way. <laughs> you got fined mid-play. <laughs> we digging him for that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go back real quick. I don't even think the sa- – I don't even think Jefferson broke through – I think the safety stayed over the top the whole time on this. I remember watching the replay on TV, and I was like, what? What?" Once again, we're throwing it to 18 a lot. They're going to obviously have people way over 18. Boy, that is, yeah, that's just brutal. Uh, just brutal, man. I mean, I wonder how much of this is like, man, we've been having a great year. I'm just going to throw him the ball, and he's going to make it happen. And then all of a sudden, you have a really well-disciplined safety that's hanging over the top, and it's like, no, nah, no, nah, we're not. I mean, dude, that's intercepted on the one-inch line. <laughs> God. Drive all the way down just for that. And then the worst part is you've had like a 10-play drive, and you're gassed. And this dude is so fast running it back, and you're like, no chance I'm going to catch him. No chance. <laughs> Let's see how far out of bounds he look, can't. Look, you can tell the gears are grinding right now. He's, like, He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That's how I, I, I'm surprised that a melee didn't start after. That, I am to too, to be honest with you. But we kind of talked about this this week on our show. There really is no more fighting craziness. Like last year's Philly game set a whole new record of people being like, that's enough fighting. It's not like what it used to be. Because if you would have hit somebody like that five, 10 years ago, phew, you'd have lost your no. teeth. You'd have lost all of them. Is this the, uh, is this the, the other blitz you were talking about? Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> this is brutal. The same goddamn thing, dude. I'm telling you, it's at this moment in the offensive line room that the, the play would have been paused. <laughs> Tony would have sat there for a good, a good 45 seconds without Sperano, saying man. anything. <laughs> He'd have been like, we need to go over jet protection again. <laughs> no, Tony. <laughs> Tell me so what's what the- Okay. What is Flores 
schematically doing here to confuse the Jaguars? Nothing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't tell you, man. We are in six man pro. I don't know what nobody knows about six man pro. We are sliding to the far left. We are going to the nickel over the slot. Pause. That means that number four is checking 51 and zero. Okay. If so, 51. So, so, he, he, so he is looking for which one of these two dudes is coming, right? If 51 or zero come, they are the running backs. This is the second time in this game that we've had to talk about this. Play. <laughs> This tackle is so threatened by Ivan Pace. And I think it, a lot of it, I'm telling you, is because of the last play that he got that sack that this kid's now like, I'm kind of caught in the middle. So this is on right tackle. Oh, when Bigsby's in the backfield and he steps up to block somebody, I'm 200% assuming this is a six-man pro. Running backs never block for fun. They don't stay in because they want to. That's not happening. Right, like this dude would rather be on a swing route or a Texas route or a flat route. He'd rather be catching the ball. He doesn't want to put his mask against Ivan Pace's mask. That's right. the last thing he wants to do. So the minute you step up, I'm looking at this right tackle like Bud, and you, we've Mackie, we've laughed about this on the O line committee. How many times have we told you the tackles look at us and go, who do I block? And what do we do? We point out to the twenty million dollar man and go, that guy. You block that guy. So basically, and and one thing you've you've taught us here is. Who are the who are the known rushers? Hands and, are down. And it's always yep. about pro proximity matters here. So you got known rusher over here, and even though Van, so the, no, I he's a known rusher. What might be, but here's the here's the confusing part. Maybe is that the Vikings do use Van Ginkle sometimes as more of a traditional linebacker. No, this is a four man structure. No matter what anyone says, Van Ginkle is instantly the defensive end. as a four man structure. Even if he's a linebacker in this structure, he is the defensive right. end. And so with these known rushers, these are the tackles' responsibilities here. We're gonna let the twenty million dollar men block the twenty yeah. million dollar men. Like, why and would you if send this a smaller dude comes in? Then it's on Bigs. Dude, G. Row would have lost his mind. Like, why are we gonna put the tiniest dude on the field on the biggest rusher? He'd be like, that's your job. And it didn't take long for us to figure out well, that is our job. Like, the, clearly the tackle thinks it's five man pro. And if if, if say Bigsby, because look, see, even Bigsby's looking at him like, what are you doing? And I know the tackle's like, that's my guy. But Bigsby's like, you Pumps want up. me? Oh, that's a massive fine right there. It, by the way, nobody's helping up the quarterback. These two are in the middle of a fight. The left tackle is like, wait, what's going on? And the three guys over here are like, yeah, we're booking a trip to Cabo. Also, we're, go hey, we're going on a cruise as an O line. Van Ginkle looks. Watch Van Ginkle. He looks disappointed that he didn't either get a strip sack here or. Look at him. He's like, ah. Oh. I think in the moment he's like, "Can I even consider that a sack? I don't even know what to do with that." <laughs> well, they they got the number one pick for a reason, people. Okay, here we go. All right, Vikings back on offense here. <gasps> Look at slinging Sam, man, dude. He's, he got some wheel. Slide, big, big third down. Slide. Why are we not sliding? Slide. Ty Chandler, a rare appearance. A very rare appearance. But didn't Aaron Jones go down in this game? Yeah, he he did come back, but he's got some ribs. He was limited at practice yesterday. Did nothing worse than hurting the ribs at the back. Ooh, see, go back real quick. Go back real quick. Go back real quick. Did you see what thirty two did on his way out? I have yet to see anybody do this all year. Watch this. Ed Ingram's coming down. Boop. Oh, a little, a little shot to the ribs? Okay. Dude, Let's do you know how rare a shot to the ribs in the interior is? You never, you never get those guys to give you a shot on the ribs. And it's one of the easiest things. Like, I'm blocking this dude. Hey, if this guy's ribs are exposed, try and break one for me. Boom. Oh, I love that. I love him so much. Vikings more culture. Vikings go, culture right there. Go back real quick. I want to see what happened on the outside of the left. All right, so Cam Robinson, who, by the way, has a – He's on the injury report with a foot, and he was limited yesterday. I don't know if that was bothering him throughout the whole game or what the deal was there. We'll see what happens. Hmm. 
Mm. A great job by Sam to get out of trouble, especially right there. But right here, slide. Slide, yeah. little buddy. Slide. You're going to take the wrong hit, and it's... He can move, man. Right like, there. He, is... he just, like, slips through, like, under the bridge. Like, oh, okay, yeah. don't mind me. Right there, though. Slard. It's plays like this. It's plays like the first one we showed you that as you go back and watch some of this, they move the ball. He's super athletic. He's got a big arm. I see why Kevin O'Connell has been so defensive about the criticism. Oh, absolutely. They're, try they're trying to coach some of the bad stuff. Real quick, before we roll a couple more plays here, I do want to uh, say hello to the Fillmore. So the Fillmore in Minneapolis was where we held our 2024 Purple Daily Draft Party where they drafted J.J. McCarthy. Just one of the most fun nights in Purple Daily history. An amazing venue. And uh, they hold great concerts there, too. So if you're looking for a fun night out with some friends, scornorth.com slash tickets to find a full schedule of upcoming shows at the Fillmore. Uh, say anything on Tuesday next week and then the following Tuesday as well. And uh, all kinds of other great stuff coming up at the Fillmore, Minneapolis. Just steps away from Target Center, Target Field. Scorenorth.com slash tickets. Check it out. Okay, mm. here we go. A couple more for you. We'll send you on your way. Go wake up the kiddos. You know, I got to take kids to the, oh, this is just bad snap. This is this bad. This is bad. Center quarterback exchange, man. Ain't nothing more important than the game. Hey, let me, since we only have like a couple more minutes here, let me just see what else we got here. We got, uh, these are some of the big, yeah, these are like the big, let me give you one big turnover here. See, Mac Jones can throw some bad picks, too. Oh, absolutely. This was like a bad pick fest, man. Dude, it was under no no, no, no duress. Just going to sling this out there. Here we go. There's Van Ginkle. Oh, tackle still doesn't block him. Oh, brutal. Oh, <laughs> two people almost picked that. <laughs> That's a microcosm of Mac Jones' career. This was the Vikings. It was it – was, they were up by like three, two points at one point, up by five. It always felt like they were up by twenty in this game. I know it, it, that was the, so. it was a weird game, dude. And like I said, this is one of those games where afterwards coaches are like, "Hey, man, a win forgives all sins." But we need to watch this tape. We need to break some of it down. We need to figure it out. Like we have to put up more points, and we have to do better in the red zone. That's the number one concerning thing to me. Is like the red zone. Got to do better in the red zone. When we get in there, we have to put up points, and it can't yeah. be three. You constantly see teams that are like, oh, we'll settle for a field goal. And it's like, that's going to hurt you, especially now. November, December, points matter. And you got to put them on the board and you got to let people know we're here to play. Because, man, when you get into that playoffs, it's going to be it's going to be wild this year, dude. I feel like this is going to be a fun year for the playoffs. You're looking at some new teams jumping in. It's going to be really exciting to see. And it's, yeah. dude, the Vikings are in a great spot. There's two in the division, sitting behind the Lions above the Packers, you're in a good spot, you're in the playoffs, just keep growing. And I think one of the things that Kevin does a great job of is when he sees criticism coming down the pipe and he sees people starting to attack his players, he kind of jumps out in front of it. Like, nah. He does. Maybe, maybe not so much. And He doesn't up, pile on, call no, him soft. No, nah, no, nah, not at all. And, <laughs> but think about it. When you're in that room and you're, you're he's talking to you, you're like, hey, at least this guy has my back, right? Like, this yeah. guy will fight for me to the world and that that goes so much farther than people know because you'll redial in refocus get it back together we're good to go yeah hey dude awesome stuff thanks for oh, jumping in early football. Football. the rhino alex boone find oh, him on o-line committee the o-line committee youtube channel and uh, yeah we'll see what happens vikings titans and then vikings versus train wreck bears so a couple winnable games on the horizon here all right, dude. We'll uh, we'll do it again next week. Can't wait. This is Purple Daily. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl around here before we die. Come on, guys. Come on.